as the chicken lady of Alabama that I am, I have due diligence to tell you all these things. Americana Chickens 101. The good, bad, and the ugly. Let's get after it. All right, so here. <laughs> All right, y'all. So here we have one of my blue Americana hens. I'm going to show you her body size. She is seven months old. It's okay, mama. She is blue. I have blue black and splash americanas i have done a video on blue black splash genetics the link to that video will be in the description of this video so click the little box and go down when you see information up under this video and there will be that link go back and read that that's all i have right now blue black and splash americanas but this is the americana breed so let's talk about what they're supposed to look like these are a pure breed they have a pea comb, if you can see here. Her comb is very close to her face. She has muffs. She has little muffs sticking out. And their shanks or legs will be a slate blue. You just want them dark looking, okay? That's what you want in this breed. Now, Americanas are pure and they lay a beautiful blue egg. Now, Americanas are not great layers. They lay, on average, they say 200 eggs per year. I'm going to say a good bit less than that. But the beauty of these are, if you want to have any kind of olive egg, such as this right here, you will need blue in your gene pool. I've also done a video on that, olive egger genetics. The link for that will be in the description of this video as well. So go check out those two videos if you want to have colored eggs in your flock. So we've went over what they're supposed to look like. They're usually smaller. I will say the roosters get pretty hefty. They get thick, wide in girth, but they're short. Usually these are short chickens and they're just a smaller body size, especially the hen. So back to the olive eggs. Why does the blue matter? The blue matters because you need blue and you need brown. You need those together to make olive or green, but they must be pure breeds. That's all in the olive egger video. You need a pure blue layer, a double blue layer with the genetic from each side, and you need a dark chocolate layer to get olive. This one's pretty light on my olive scale but it's still an olive egg. It's a very beautiful egg. This is different than a green egg. There's a tone difference. A green egg will look more blue cast. This will look more brown when you put it up against different colored eggs. Look at chickens like this before you go buy your first chicks or chickens this upcoming spring. That's why I'm doing this video. So Americanas are beautiful. There's many colors. You can have blue and have black, flash, buff, Wheaton and many more. So there's tons of different colors. Only certain ones are recognized by poultry associations, but again, we have blue black splash. So let me tell you about our experience with Americana chickens. First things first, they are beautiful. They're high priced. A lot of people want these. So if you're trying to sell chicks, if you're in that business, you can bring more money for these. People usually like Americanas because they're one of two breeds that are usually used to make olive eggers for the blue jean. Americanas and cream leg bars. We've had both. So let me tell you about the bad. Americanas again are small. They are very small. They are great foragers, so that's good. We have free range ours, but they do not like being confined whatsoever. They do not like being cooped up. They like being able to roam. They like being able to do their own thing pretty much out in the wild. So that's great if you free range like us, but if you have to keep your chickens in a coop or even us who free range have to keep certain pens locked up at certain times if we're breeding, that leads to problems because these chickens don't want to stay in their coop. Furthermore, Americanas, this opens up my biggest nest box here in this huge big coop. They don't like to lay in the nest whatsoever. They like to lay out wherever they have been free ranging. They 
will lay eggs all over your yard if they lay they do not like laying right here in this nest now this has all been my experience you may have had better experiences i hope you have started out with our very first americanos by getting a black americana rooster he was huge again short but he was beautiful i even did a youtube short on that boo boo was his name he was beautiful unfortunately he's not here anymore um i talk about the dog attack that happened last january so he's not you know here unfortunately but we loved boo boo we used him to breed he was great now last spring we got some wheaton americanas these were young maybe three to four months old they looked great they had when you get into wheaton you'll have blue or black tail feathers or splash they get into all that with just the the shade of their tail feathers these were blue and black beautiful chickens but they're cream colored overall just gorgeous the rooster was good um he was fertile the hens never laid one egg never laid one egg so that's what i'm going to talk to you about the ugly with americana chickens i'm telling y'all the pure truth out of every chicken breed we've ever had and we've had blue lace red wine dots silver lace red wine dots golden lace red wine dots rhode island reds leghorns um, Starlight Green Eggers, Olive Eggers, French Black Copper Morans, Polish Silkies, Frizzles. We've had tons. I have never had anything not lay an egg as bad as the Americanas. They do not lay for us. They say that they like to free range. We free range those Wheatons trying to get them to lay, which we free range everything anyways. I've got Silkies now down a pasture. That's just how we roll and they never laid eggs they never laid eggs the few eggs i found were in a bucket somewhere that i think were theirs i'm not even quite sure they did not use the nest box they did not do the egg song they did not get into any of that they didn't like it they whatever that they do they do not like to lay early on which may be a good thing because usually the longer it takes a chicken to lay an egg the better off you are because usually that chicken will have a longer lifespan in my experience the sooner that they stop the sooner that they start laying the sooner they stop so it's good usually it's good that they kind of wait our wine dots wait but the americanas right now the seven eight month olds still have not laid they have not laid they have been raised free ranging from two months old they will not lay an egg we have increased protein we've increased everything they just don't like to lay a lot and it's usually a smaller blue egg guys it's not going to be a huge huge egg not like the olive egg i just showed you it's usually a small pale blue egg it's not going to be this bright blue like i'm showing you all these beautiful olive colors it's not going to be that way it's going to be a very light tinted blue very pale blue like a, a robin's egg blue that you would see as a paint color of the few that we've got off the wheatons that laid one or two so the, the catch 22 with this, the problem is you have to have this in your gene pool if you're wanting to do olive eggers. What I would recommend, guys, Americanas seem more prevalent than cream leg bars, so they're going to be easier to get a hold of, and they're probably going to be cheaper. Cream leg bars, to me, are gorgeous. The roosters are gorgeous. We've um, bred tons with the leg bars. They've got the barring. They look like barred rocks. Um, their offspring, especially if they're crossed with a different breed, they're just beautiful. I would go for the cream leg bar. That's my honest opinion. If I couldn't and I just had to get Americanas, if you've got dark egg laying chickens and you're just wanting olive eggs, you don't care, I would get a rooster. Our roosters have done well as Americanas, but the hens have been a problem. I don't know what it is. I'm going to tell you, everything that lays a pure blue egg, we have had trouble with here. We've got French black copper morans. We've got these olive eggers. We've got starlight green eggers. We've had Easter eggers. And that's something else I'm going to talk about. All these different chickens have laid except the Americanas. It's just very, very, very low. And that's a problem if you're wanting to hatch your own chicks. I've tried to hatch before off these Americanas. Not any good. Very, very low egg output. That decreases fertility. It's not good. So before you invest a bunch of money or time, you may have a bunch of Americanas, and I've probably got 30 here right now. I'm hoping that they lay any day, and I hope they do well. But we have had trouble so far, so I'm telling you to watch out before you're, you start this. So let's talk about Americanas and Easter Eggers. So I touched on this just a little bit in my Olive Egger video, and I want to reiterate this again. When you see 
all these chicken breeds, you're going to want something that lays a colored egg. A lot of you are. I was one of those people. That's okay. That's what we've got. I'm down to, except for Silkies, nothing but colored eggs. I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. My husband says if we could go back and get just leghorns, he'd do that. That's just what, you know, different strokes for different folks. But be knowledgeable about, about all this and don't get the wool pulled over your eyes. People will try to sell you Easter eggers and they'll say that they're Americanas. They'll look so doggone close a lot of times, but they won't be right. They must have peak home, muffs, slate legs, and I've seen Easter eggers that would pass for an Americana in a heartbeat, but just look a little bit different. Make sure that they're a solid color is what I would do. I would make sure solid black, solid blue, or that splash, something like that that you know or Wheaton, where it's a pure Americana. That way you won't think that there's any cross in there. If it's an orangey color, now buff, they do have buff Americanas, but if it's an orangey color with any kind of black in the neck, no, it's gonna be an Easter egger because that's how a lot of these Easter eggers look. So why is the big problem with Easter eggers? For somebody that has tried for four years to get olive eggs, and this year I finally got my first round. They're beautiful. Listen to me. Do not even consider Easter eggers if you're wanting olive eggers. Don't even look that way. I know those eggs are pretty. I know those chickens look good. Don't do it because it's just going to hassle you and stop your breeding program. Now, Easter eggers are great. They're probably a lot hardier than Americanas. As far as a better chicken, I'd probably go with the Easter egg. Anything that is mixed in the gene pool like that, as far as breeding, they're going to be healthier. That's just science instead of something that's so pure. But... If you are wanting olive eggs, you cannot use an Easter egg or you might have a fluke and it come out right, but usually it won't. So let me explain. Easter eggers are a cross, usually between something like an Americana and something else like a blue lace red wine dot, where it's just a plain brown egg laying chicken that's with something blue and it may throw a gene somewhere. Those chickens, those chicks that they, those two crosses have will have even a pink looking egg, green, blue, or brown. I'm telling you right now, most of them are going to be brown. If they do lay a blue or green egg, you cannot use that. I've had one or two that laid a blue or green egg. You cannot use that though in a reliable, true breeding program, especially if you are wanting to sell your chicks. If you were into this as a business, you cannot sell those as pure olive eggers. You can't take that blue egg laying chicken and put it under a Moran that lays a dark chocolate egg. You can't have a Moran and an Easter egger to make an olive egger. It will never work. You won't get the right color tones. You won't get the right looking chicken. You won't get anything that's right because it's not dependable. The only thing you're gonna get out of that is more than likely a brown egg laying chicken because brown is dominant. You have to have a pure blue. That's the catch 22 about all of this guys. The cream leg bars didn't do so hot for us and neither did the Americanas, but you have to have it. You have to have that pure blue unless you can run up on something like an Aracana, which has tufts and no tail and all this. It's, it's totally different chicken. It's pretty rare. I wouldn't even consider that right now. I would look at Americanas and cream leg bars. You must have a pure blue egg laying chicken to do this breeding. If you want to have more blue egg laying chickens, you must have pure blue egg layers as parents if you're wanting blue eggs or if you're wanting olive eggs. Now, let's say that with my Americanas, I put them with my golden lace wine dot rooster, okay? Put them with them. Guess what the offspring will be? Easter eggers. It's where that pure gene pool got disconnected Something else got in there that was not supposed to be, and they give no telling what. They may have blue eggs, they may have green, they may have brown. That's Easter eggers. An Easter egger is where it's not pure and it's not with the dark chocolate like a well summer Moran, and it d didn't give you an olive egger. So, on our homestead right now, we have the Americanas. We have wine dots, um, just a few, just because I love the blue lace. We have some golden lace. We also have mainly olive eggers. Olive eggers are more durable than their parents. Trust me. I love these olive eggers. They're strong. They're healthy. They're foragers. They're great. They're already laying. These chickens are younger than my Americanas and they're already laying. That's the great thing because they're a mixed hybrid. So kind of like an Easter egger, go back to the olive egger video. I know I'm kind of getting down that rabbit hole, but go watch that because I break it all down. But as far as Americanas, Americanas are more of a weak chicken. 
they now you may have the best chicken ever and i'm telling you one of my best roosters was an americana rooster they're sturdy they're hardy and they're great but as far as the hens i don't know if people are telling y'all this or not but i've had really really bad luck with these hens so far i've got high hopes for the ones i've got but i don't know how far this is going to go and i don't know how well it's going to go so if i had it to do all over with again i would go back for my breeding program and only get a blue americana rooster and that may end up be what happens here because it's so hard to keep these going and keep them producing and keep them doing well they seem to be more cold sensitive to me they just seem weaker i don't know what it is i did read something this morning that said americanas were brought to the u.s in the 1970s they've not been here that long so i don't know if maybe the gene pool is just not that deep i don't know what it is but it seems like we have more trouble with americanas than we ever thought about silkies it's something about the americanas so i love them they're beautiful but as far as sustainable no i would not go get this breed not for sustainability only for a breeding program and especially if you were going to try to sell if you were a business and you had to have it that yes i would be getting you would have to people love olive eggs they love them guys they love olive eggers they love these colored egg laying chickens you need to look at all of this now while these hatchery books are coming out and you're seeing all the bells and the whistles and all the pretty chickens you need to look now at all of this stuff because guys spring's coming I, we, we haven't even gotten into winter but i'm telling you they will be sold out usually by february until june or july on all these chickens that you want so you need to be deciding now americanas are a beautiful beautiful chicken they are but as far as sustainable I just don't think so guys I, I really don't that's just me if i was going for pure sustain sustain ability i would be getting a mixed breed i'd be getting some leghorns um but now i'm different the rhode island reds we had them they were not my favorite they didn't lay like my wine dots i love blue lace red wine dots i love gold lace wine dots i love silver lace wine dots i love any kind of wine dot because they are dual purpose americana your roosters will be dual purpose. Your hens wouldn't be worth fooling with. They're so small. You need to think of that too if you're looking at sustainability. If you are going down that route with your chickens from birth to plate, really. Um, and that's a respectable thing. It is, guys. So uh, these blue lace red wine dot hens we've got, they're humongous. They're huge. They look like a turkey at Thanksgiving. That is a dual purpose breed. They can do well in the cold. They're fat. They're happy. They lay pretty good size eggs well actually a large egg it, it was as big as the rhode island reds rhode island reds had a lot less meat on them a lot less as far as their body their physical shape they were a lot skinnier um you can't you know you can't sell them for as much if you're going to sell that but that's the beauty about americanas guys if you are hatching chicks i have had worse hatch rates with americanas so guys i'm not beating up on these chickens i promise you i'm not i'm not because i've got a whole pen full and i hope that it works but it looks like again this is round three it's not working probably going to end up with just the roosters instead of the hens people love americanas and i do too i think they're gorgeous but they're not sustainable and they're hard to keep going on the flip side the good side americanas are very beautiful and people like that and they like that in hens so if you were just wanting to sell might be a good thing it just depends on what you're looking for at your farm these are all just my experiences but i feel like as the chicken lady of alabama that i am i have due diligence to tell you all these things